Bruno. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll be talking today about how to accelerate uh, AI learning uh, as well as mitigate bias. Since this is a public forum, I'll start with uh, this statement. Data is the source of a machine learning to be artificially intelligent. By machine here, I mean, say, a software program that is defining a bunch of adjustable dials called weights. And by learning, I mean, you feed data in, tweak the dials, and keep doing that until you achieve a prediction of the accuracy you want. But all this is dependent on the data you feed it with, right at the top. And this is the topic today. That is, data is mostly siloed either realistically or either effectively. Right. By that, I mean it could be siloed because of privacy reasons. Privacy, personal privacy, country sovereignty, security. Or it could be siloed effectively because of huge volumes, like huge volumes of petabytes of data generated every experiment, for example. Impractical to move. So data is effectively or realistically siloed. With silos comes bias. Let me give you an example in healthcare. If you, have, if you own a hospital and you are seeing a patient of a certain demographics around your hospital, and then training your patient's data with machine learning in the hopes you can predict with precision uh, uh, diagnostics, right? A diagnosis of a case. The problem with that is that ultimately you'll be biased to the demographics of the patients you are seeing. Now, your hope is that you can collect data from all over the world's hospital, combine all that global data and train the model based on that. Well, GDPR and other privacy uh, requirements, regulations will prevent that. So what is the solution? The solution is a network of AI system. The solution is distributed training, but in a much more scalable way, we believe. So the solution is this. The local hospital will train based on the demographics of the patients they are seeing. And then regularly, the blockchain comes in, collect all your neural network weights, adjustable dials, up to that point, and then the blockchain averages it across all the hospitals of the world, and then what you get back is the global average weights. And then you update your model with that, and you continue, continue lo learning locally. And if you keep doing this, we have shown that it is predicting in a generalized, more generalized way as though you had collected all the data globally and trained on one model. The result is swarm learning. I, I we were very concerned about linking machine learning with blockchain, two very established methods. Right? and worried about the flaws in it, that we insisted on you know, putting it through peer review. And it, uh, it's now on the June 10th uh, issue of Nature and on its cover. If you're interested, uh, give it a read. Now, I would say that there is federated learning before swarm learning. Right? Federated learning does the same thing of distributed learning, learning locally, and then regularly a central authority collects your weights, averages it, and send it back down. The central authority is one of the members' hospital around. The issue with that with many of the institutions we work with is that you are giving a little bit more power and authority and influence to that designated collector. So that's the reason why we decided to switch out that designated collector with a private permission blockchain. Well, the idea here is therefore you are you do not share any of your private data. It doesn't leave your location. All you share are the learnings globally. Thank you.